I want you to know, there comes a time, singers, musicians, ushers, everybody on, on, on staff, no matter who you are, there comes a time where God is expecting us to expect. We have sat back in a place of, of waiting, believing, but it's hard for us to expect what we're, what we're waiting on. We are, we've gotten to become professional waiters. We have become professional waiters. Well, I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm waiting on the Lord, I'm waiting on the Lord. But there comes a time where your expectation has got to be peaked. You cannot wait without expectation. That's called fantasy. Expecting something, I mean, waiting on something and having no expectation is called fantasy. Amen. But if God speaks, then you're supposed to believe to the degree of expectation. You're supposed to make way. You're supposed to, you're supposed to make position and provision for the promise of God. You're supposed to increase yourself. You're supposed to strengthen your cord. You're supposed to extend your tent. You're supposed to make ready for the manifestation. You get a promise, you shout over the promise and then do nothing in expectation. Time is up for that. We have got to get to the place of believing that God will do what he said he will do and that the time of that is now. Bible says in the book of Isaiah 43, verse 19. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. I don't hear anybody here. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Not tomorrow, not in the future. He said, now. See, you got to believe this. See, you got to believe this. You've got to believe that now means. Now. You got to believe that you are at a point of, rece of receiving now. Now it shall spring forth. Somebody say now. now. You are in your now at this moment. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Behold means pay attention. Keep your eyes open. Get ready to see it. Now I will do a new thing. Shall you not know it? Meaning, shall you not expect it? Shall you not wait upon it? Shall you not believe that it is happening as I speak? Shall you not receive what he promised? Shall you not know it? I will make Help me through this. I will make a way in your wilderness. Shobara. The area of your struggle, the area of your trial, the area that has not produced, the area of your loneliness, the area of your depression. He said, I will carve a way for you in your wilderness. And I, I'm sorry, I'm screaming. And I will bring rivers to your desert. I'm about to holler. But when is he going to make a way in your wilderness? When is he going to bring rivers to your desert? And you have got to believe that this is the now. And I'm not talking figuratively, I mean literally. You are in your now. Somebody say a new thing. That means that everything that I've gone through yesterday is gone yesterday. Everything that I had suffered through, it's a new period. Everything that I have had to cry my way through, it's a new day of joy. Now is the manifestation of God. Now is where I will see God do wonders. Now is when God will show me his glory. Now is when the promise of God will come to pass. Somebody holler a new thing. A new thing. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to shake you out of your complacency. 
trying to shake you out of responding without receiving. Because in church, we're used to responding. And, and we dismiss the fact that even in our response, we haven't received. This is a time where we will receive. This is a time where we will believe and receive. And I'm talking about not just for you, but for your family. I'm talking about for your children and your children's children. I'm talking about for your finances. I'm talking about for your mental and spiritual health. I'm talking about every aspect of you, body, soul, and spirit. Somebody holler in this house. God wants to show you his power. God wants to reward the faithful. God wants to give to those who believe. God is not just a deity who sits upon a throne. He is your father. And I don't know, you know because of our society, many people don't re really know what it is to have a father. But if you ever had a good father, then you know that a good father cares about his children. If you ever had a good father, you know that a good father will move heaven and earth for his children. If you ever had a good father, you know that a good father will go without so his children can have. And that's an earthly father. And Jesus said, if you being evil know how to do good, good things for your children, how much more will your heavenly father do for those who ask of him? You've got to believe that he is not just God, but he is your daddy. And he's a good, good father. I'm about to cry. I'm trying to get through this thing. And, I, and he lives. He loves. He yearns to give good things to the faithful. To those who will not bend nor bow due to their circumstances. To those who know that God will come through no matter how he comes through. He will come through. We don't get desperate. We don't get desperate. We don't have to go to the bottle. We don't have to self-medicate. I don't hear anybody. We don't have to sit back and lay on a couch somewhere. Have a nabadonomosha. We know that God will do what he said. And we have waited. I'm sorry. And we have waited and we have believed and we have held on and we would not let go hallelujah and we've cried many tears suffered many pains experienced much loss but the one thing we never lost was our faith the one thing we never lost was our faith Jesus, I'm sorry, no, I'll get to you in a second. Jesus called Peter to the side and he said, Simon, Simon, wait a minute, I thought you, I thought you changed my name to Peter, but I'm going to talk to your natural side. Simon, Simon. I had a conversation just the other day with Satan and Satan has desired you. In other words, he asked could he have you because he can't do anything without permission. We give Satan too much credit Satan does not have the power just to run up on you because God said he would never give you any more. I don't hear anybody here that he would not give you any more than you could bear. Well, I, well, I lost my loved one and I thought I was going to die, ah, but he, he wouldn't let it happen until you were ready to handle it. It may have hurt you, but it couldn't kill you. I don't hear anybody here. 
It may have bruised you, but it couldn't stop you. Y'all gonna make me preach like a preacher here. And, and, and God has made a promise to us that he wouldn't let anything happen to us that we could not bear. Meaning that he, after he strengthens us, then he allows the test. So he says, Satan came to me and he asked me, could he sift you? Could he tear you? Could he sift you like wheat? Now I did not tell him no. Y'all not hearing me. I did not tell him no. But what I did was prayed for you. Oh, what did you pray? Oh, what did you pray? Jesus said, I prayed for you. What did you pray? I prayed that your faith would not fail you. No matter what the enemy threw at you that your faith would not fail you. No matter what struggle you have to go through, that your faith would not fail you. No matter the consequences, that your faith would not fail you. No matter who left your life. That your faith would not fail you. And your faith, my brother, and your, my sister, your faith has not failed. It got you to where you are now. Through many dangers, toils, toils and snares. Somebody say, I have already come. And my faith has brought me this far. Believing that what God promised, is already done. Haya Shandarabu. In the mighty name of Jesus. I am not giving up and I am not throwing in the towel. I've come this far by faith. And I'm going to go the rest of the way. Trusting and believing. And God said, I'm glad you said that. God said, I'm glad you believe that. Because right now. I'm about to do oh, I'm about to do I'm about to do a brand new thing have you not known it will you not believe it so that means the old things that broke you it's a new day that means the old hurts in your broken heart are about to be mended and you're going into a new cycle a cycle called joy a cycle called peace a cycle called success a cycle of the miraculous a cycle of the breakthrough if you believe it put a praise on it. come on if you believe it put a praise on it now now don't just go into your emotions but let your faith rise up. Don't just clap and praise because it feels good. But clap and praise because you believe it. Ah! Clap and praise. Not just because you believe it, but because you receive it. It's doing it right. 
Sit down, let me finish. I don't know why I'm preaching to you. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm preaching to you. And I'm about to burst in tears. Because there is a there's a meaning to this for you. People think that just because you look like you're doing good, they don't know what's going on, the struggle inside. But God said, it's your time. And I'm about to change some things for you that you've been waiting on. It's coming through. It's coming through. Somebody celebrate. cannot go through all you've been through without receiving the promise you got to believe everything I've gone through has brought me to this place of reception and I will not be denied and I will not walk away empty handed but I will walk in the promise of God and everything that he said is already set up for me. I'm going to walk into it. I'm going to grab a hold to it. I'm going to see it with my eyes. And I'm going to hold it in my hand. Because this is my time. This is my season. I am living in my now. I'm about to scream. I'm living in my now and God is about to show off in my life somebody say show off Jesus God is about to show off if you thought you were blessed before you will see how blessed you are now God is about to show off Jesus Oh show Jesus I gotta go I gotta go but Sherry God said He said that he's gonna work some things out miraculously I told you from Joshua the third chapter. Joshua the third chapter said that God was going to do some things if we understood the time that we're in and how to approach God. God is going to do some things. Joshua the third chapter. Come on, help me out here. Joshua three. Come on, come on back there. Joshua three. There we are. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and they removed out of Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel. And they lodged there. Hallelujah. Before they passed over. Come on, go on. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and you see the priests the Levites bearing it then shall you remove from where you are get ready for the new thing then shall you remove from where you become comfortable because change is not comfortable and when God does a new thing he brings you to a place that you've never been before a place, a place promised to you, but you've never been there before. You said, I'm a hotel. He said, yeah, I want you to come. And, and when you see the priests carrying the ark and, and you hear them, the office is going through. He said, I want you to get up and remove from you are. Remove from your place that you are in. Hallelujah. And I want you to go after it. 
Look at somebody say, go after it. Look at two people and say, hey, hey, go after it. We don't have enough money. Go after it. I don't have enough help. Go after it. I don't think I can make it. Go after it. You got to change your mind. Because it's not based on what you have. It's based on who you have. I don't know who that's for, but you better hear me. If God said it, go after it. Money will come, go after it. Support will come, go after it. Help will come, go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Don't come near it. In other words, don't get so common with God. Don't play with him. That's what that's saying. Don't get so common with God. I know the man. He's not a man. God is not a man. I know the man upstairs. He's not upstairs. God fills heaven and earth. Don't ever become common with him. Don't, don't ever become common. Don't use his name in vain. Don't laugh at the jokes about Jesus. Comedians need other material. But I will not laugh at your jokes about my Christ. Because he's too high and lifted up. He's too sacred and he's too sovereign. You find something else to laugh about. But don't laugh about Jesus. He paid the price for me. Don't laugh about Jesus. He died on a cross for me. About Jesus, He rose from the dead for me. I gotta, I gotta end. He said, "Don't, don't come near it. Don't play it common. Don't." Don't play him common. Don't come near it. Because this is sacred. This is sacred. Don't come near it so that you can know the way that you got to take. Because you have not passed this way heretofore. Where he's about to take you. I am excited preaching about this. I got I to gotta end. I got to cut it short. I am excited preaching this message where he's about to take you is the promised place where you have never been before I, I know what that feels like because it's happened to me several times where God took me out of poverty and took me on a course that I did not even know I had never been that way before and he prospered me, put me on stages around the world, took me to a place I'd never been before. And he prospered me, gave me more than I thought I could ever have. And he, oh yeah, and he prospered me. And I'm telling you, he's not finished yet. Just when you think you've seen it all, God says, get ready, for there's another level. And I'm about to do a new. Hit three people say, get ready, 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 get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready.
I'm going to end here. I'm going to close here. He said, because you have not been, you have not passed this new way before. You hear Shuman no more. You, you, you're, he's about to blow your mind. I know he's about to blow mine. And I'm ready for it. Oh, I'm ready for this next move. I, I may be 63, but I'm ready for this next move. You young people need to keep up. I'm going to show you how to receive from God. I'm going to show you how to receive the blessing. And Joshua said unto all of the people, sanctify yourselves. Sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow, for tomorrow, sanctify yourselves, meaning get yourself ready to receive, have expectation, have expectation. Sanctify yourself, separate yourself from the negatives, separate yourself from the fear, separate yourself from the, from the situation, sanctify yourself, don't let fear talk to you, don't let negative people talk to you and don't let your negative mind control you, sanctify yourself, be purged of the negative. Joshua, tell the people, sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow, God will do wonders among you. If he did not do the miraculous, then he's not God. No, 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 stop, stop. Think about this. If he cannot, will not, do miraculous things then he's not God what makes him God is his superiority his infinite power God doesn't have power he is power that went over somebody's head if you have power it's an unlimited form because it's been bequeathed upon you it's been given to you but if you are power, every bit of your being is power. That's what makes him God. He doesn't have love, he is love. Every bit of his being is love. And if this God of all power, omnipotent, if this God of all power has made you a promise, then you need to expect it. Amen. I have to stop. Do you hear me, Blondie? I have to stop. I have to stop. If the God that made all things by the word of his power makes you a promise, you should rejoice and get ready to receive it. Get ready. One more time, I know, you, I know you hate doing this, but this is just for testimony reason. Look at somebody, touch them and say, I'm ready, I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive it. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. God will do wonders among you I'm in that place now I'm receiving the wonders of God I was telling somebody yesterday that if you want a house go get a house but well, we don't have enough money ah, go get a house God made a promise he wants to take care of his children 
God will do wonders among you. I lay on the bed all day long yesterday with a fever. Sick. Came like that. Couldn't get off the bed. Over 13, 14 hours laid on the bed. And I'm saying, God, should I go to the hospital? God, what is this? Because it just hit all of a sudden. What, what is this? Tomorrow, God will do wonders. Tomorrow. How are you feeling today, Donnie? I'm feeling the wonders of God. Hey! Feeling the wonders of God. Hallelujah. Jesus.